Second Chances of the Soul by 55 Artists. Chapter 9, The Mandarin. Well, I see you have finally decided to join the rest of the world after hiding down in your lab all day. If you didn't have me, you would have starved to death long ago. Pepper commented as Tony entered the living room. Tony saw that Pepper was currently in the kitchen preparing dinner, while Peter and Harley were happily playing Mario Kart in the living room. Then it's a good thing that you were always there to take care of me, Tony replied with a smile as he leaned in to kiss Pepper. Hey, thing one and thing two, get in here with me and Pepper. I've got something for you all. Tony announced, but uh, I mean, Tony, I was just about to kick Peter's ass. T Harley complained as he entered the kitchen with Peter following close behind. Tony was thrilled that the two boys had quickly become brothers and one was rarely seen without the other. You were not, Peter retorted. Tony chuckled to himself. God, I love my boys. Well, I can guarantee that what I'm about to give you both is better than Mario Kart. Tony pulled out three watches. Put these on and then click the button on the side. He instructed, I present to you Rescue, Iron Lad and the Iron Spider. Said, Tony declared proudly. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Wait, why did you make mine to look like a spider? I actually hate spiders, but this suit is super cool. Dad, Mr. Stark, this is so awesome. Peter rambled. This is the coolest thing ever, Dad. I mean, Tony... Harley blushed, most likely due to his slip-up. Not that Tony minded, of course. Tony, are you crazy? What are you giving us all suits? I hope you don't plan on putting our children in battle. Papa scolded. After Peter and Harley finished geeking out over the suits and asking every possible question about them, of course, Papa and Fit had finished chewing out Tony for giving the children weaponized armor, Tony finally managed to explain why he had made the suits. The suits had Jarvis built into them and were only accessible to the boys with Tony's permission or in case of an emergency. Of course, Peppa wasn't a fan of the fact that they were becoming a family of robots, in her words, but eventually she related. See, the real, the thing is, I really want to ask Pep to marry me right now. I mean, I'm finally stable. Well, as stable as I will ever be. And I don't think I can wait any longer. Pep's been holding onto that ring since 2008. So that's really already been taken care of. But what if she says no? What if it's too fast for her? God, I've already done this before. Why am I so fucking nervous? Not to mention, we've already adopted a kid together. Marriage shouldn't definitely should be in the cards. Tony rambled on nervously as Natasha, as he made adjustments to his suits in his lab. The two of them hanging out at Tony's lab to gossip and complain about their lives had become a regular occurrence. Well, I, for one, think it's cute that your iron heart can get nervous when it comes to the woman that you love. Natasha teased. And you guys have definitely known each other forever. It's definitely not so too fast. If dying taught us anything, it's that we can't waste our lives by sitting around and waiting too long. Wow. Since when did you become a romance expert? You never even managed to find Kappa date. Tony said. For your information, I did manage to find him a date. I mean, when I set them up, I thought she was a nurse that lived across the hall. But it turned out to be Agent Sharon Carter, Natasha responded. Tony had chosen the wrong moment to sip his green smoothie as he instantly spat the liquid everywhere in surprise. Wait, Sharon Carter, as in Aunt Peggy's niece? That is so fucked up. Imagine what Aunt Peggy or Dad would have said if they had have seen that. <laughs> Tony burst into uncontrollable laughter with Natasha joining in. Well, I don't think they, I don't think they actually dated. They just kissed. I think it was too weird for him. Natasha replied, Wait, does that mean Kappa's still a hundred-year-old virgin? Tony asked. I mean, I'm not an expert on Steve's sex life, but I did kiss him once when we were on our run from Hydra. Hey, don't look at me like that. It wasn't like that. It was just for distraction purposes only. Steve and I are strictly friends. Anyway, I don't think he ever really got over Pe Peggy. She was his one true love. What about you and Big Green? You two seem to be awfully cosy in the Gwynjet. Tony asked. Honestly, I'm not really sure. There's always been something there. But then Ultron happened and Bruce disappeared for two years. 
and after half of the universe disappeared, it just didn't seem like a great time to get back together. Also, why are we going on about my love life now? We were just talking about Peppa. Just propose to her. You need her. You're a hot mess without her without holding you together. Well, I would take offense at that, but it's true. Sir, Happy Hogan is on the line, Jarvis said, interrupting. Hey, Hap, what's up? Tony asked as Dummy bumped into a table, spilling his smoothie on the floor. Oh, shit, Dummy, I swear I'm going to donate you to MIT one of these days. Tony snorted as he saw that Happy was holding the staff pad so close to his face that his forehead took up the entire screen. Some things never change. Is this forehead of security? Well, you told me to keep an eye on everything, everyone meeting with Peppa, and to report anything suspicious to you. Well, she's meeting with Aldridge Killian right now, and I did some digging, and we met him in the 90s. He's showing her his big brain right now. Wait, Killian? This isn't supposed to happen for another few months at least. It's too early. The Mandarin attacks haven't even started yet. Tony replied anxiously. Shit, I'm sorry, Hap. I gotta go. Listen to me carefully. I don't care what you have to do. Get Pepper out of that room and do not follow anyone that looks suspicious. They're dangerous. And I don't want you getting hurt. Just get the hell out of there and get back to the tower immediately. Do you understand? Okay, Tony. But I'm telling you, I could really help. Happy began before Tony hung up the phone and cut him off. Tony! Natasha motioned to the TV screen where bald headlines read, Midtown School of Science and Technology under attack by terrorists. Tony ordered Jarvis to turn the volume up, just in time for the two of them to hear a message by Trevor, the fake Mandarin. What the hell? How is this happening so soon? Jay, are you still connected to Pete and Harley? Are they okay? Tony said anxiously. Mr. Parker and Mr. Keener are both fine. They managed to activate their suits as soon as the explosion occurred. Their heroic actions ensured no students or staff were harmed. The media has already dubbed them Spider-Man and Iron Man Jr. Mr. Keener was quick to correct the reporters and told them to use that his name was Iron Lad. Peter, on the other hand, preferred the Spider-Man name that the media had chosen. Fortunately, the boys were both in an empty computer lab, skipping class at the time, so no one saw their faces as they put on their suits. The media is currently oblivious as to their identity said Jarvis. Tony breathed a sigh of relief. Wait, skipping classes? What were they doing in a computer lab? I believe they were attempting to disable the child safety protocol on their watches, Jarvis replied. Son of a bitch, those two are grounded forever. Skipping classes to hack into weaponized suits that I strictly told them were for emergencies only. If I weren't so relieved, I'd be a hell of a lot angrier. Jay, get me and Widow to Midtown immediately, Tony instructed. Yes, sir. After Tony had finished chewing out Harley and Peter for attempting to hack into their suits, Tony immediately hugged them both. Don't you two ever scare me like that again. I swear I've aged ten years since I've met you both. Sorry, Dad. Both Peter and Harley replied simultaneously. After all the lecturing, neither boy had realised the word Dad had slipped out of their mouths. Tony sure as hell noticed, though and he couldn't help the lone tear that fell down his cheek. They called me dad. I mean, they are my kids, but to hear them say it... Better change the subject so I can distract myself and stop crying. So, you guys are officially superheroes now. Iron Lad and Spider-Man. Does this mean we're both Avengers now? Peter asked, hopefully. Ch Tony chuckled. Sorry, kid. Not right now. You're both too young. And if I have anything to do with it, you two will never have a job as dangerous as mine. And the only reason I'm letting you keep the suits is to keep you guys safe. I'm upgrading the security measures tonight, so there will be no way in hell you two will be able to hack them. Oh, um, Peter and Harley complained in disappointment. Hey, Pete. I'm so sorry, but we're going to have to cancel our lab session tomorrow. Tony said sadly. Oh, that's okay. But what's going on? Is it Avengers business? Peter asked using exaggerated air quotes. No, that asshole Norman Osborn from Oscorp Industries keeps bothering me about some stupid serum that he's created. Apparently he wants to somehow combine it with my Iron Man tech and become something superhuman or something. Honestly, I don't trust the man. 
and that alone is why he will never work with me. Apparently ignoring his phone calls isn't enough to get him to leave me alone, so I thought I'd better tell him to fuck off in person. Tony replied, Oh my gosh, Norman Osborne? He's a genius! The man is a literal scientific legend. I mean, of course he's second to you, but he's still awesome. Can I come? Please? Tony pleaded. While I don't appreciate you calling that ass out a genius, your presence will make this meeting slightly more bearable. So, yes, you can come, Tony replied. Thank you, Mr. Stark. You're the best, Peter said excitedly. So, we're back to this Mr. Stark crap, huh? Tony asked. Well, it is the polite thing to do. Aunt May and Uncle Ben always tell me to address adults by Mr., Mrs. or Miss. Also, I know it annoys you, so I will keep doing it for as long as I live. Jeez, kid, you are like me. Okay, you can come with me. But please don't wander around the place. I really don't like the guy. And I don't like the idea of you going off on yourself and getting yourself into trouble. Tony responded. Ugh, if I really didn't like the idea of Peter being anywhere near that group. But just a quick meeting at Oscorp Industries to tell Norman to fuck off. What could possibly go wrong? End of chapter. Hi guys, hope you enjoyed this, because I did. That's quite a good chapter. I love that. I love the idea of Harley being Iron Lad. That is just such a him thing to do. <laughs> and the boys hacking into the suits and then Tony ratting them out for it. Ugh. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that's good. Also, Tony, famous Lard's words at the end there. For those of you who don't know the comics, which I assume isn't many of you, but that's just an assumption. Oscorp is where the original Peter Parker in the comics got his powers. That's where the spider that bit him came from. Okay, it's been confirmed that it doesn't actually exist in the MCU, but because it wasn't confirmed for so long, it's become a staple of the fan fiction part of it when Peter is discussing his origins as Spider-Man. Okay, so just so that we're aware. Anyway, remember to like, comment and subscribe, yada yada yada. I will see you guys soon. Have a good day, night, or wherever time zone you're in. Bye, my guys, gals, and non-binary pals. I'll see you in another video. Keep yourselves safe. Bye!